This is FinTech Futures at Finnovate Fall. I'm here with Brittany Usher from Quapa. How are you? Good, how are you? Excellent, I'm very well, thank you. Have you been enjoying the uh, conference so far? Yes, I have been. It is quite busy. Very busy, yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to get started then, would you like to give us a quick introduction to yourself and, and what you're doing here? Sure. I'm the Senior Vice President and I oversee all of our revenue teams. So that's all of our sales and marketing efforts and how our brand really meets folks in the wild and introduces them to Quavo, to client experience and really what happens in production as our clients go through onboarding and come onto our technology platforms. And then also business development and partnerships are a key part of my role. Excellent, excellent. So you're here speaking on a panel in about reinventing banking, reimagining customer experience. Given where we are now and the kind of uh, takeover of digital so far, how have banks been adapting to the, the new normal? So, you know, the new normal is so interesting because it is so impacted by sort of the post-COVID world. You know, I think that there's a lot of effort that's always been on the digital reimagination and expanding platforms, but I think COVID really set that in motion that there is no longer just a want to be able to deliver a different customer experience or a multi-channel experience, it's a need, right? There is um, a driving demand from consumers, from account holders to be able to have access to their financial institution, banking, wherever they are, right? Whatever sort of meets their needs. So I think the reimagining piece is really about the how and what makes the most sense in getting that to, you know, into production and into the hands of consumers. Excellent. So what would you say then are the most important factors when it comes to providing that good customer experience then for banks? Yeah, so, I, you know, it's interesting because you have this sort of, I wouldn't say a conflict, right, but you have these sort of two components, right, the sort of traditional banking and the fintechs. Um, and, you know, the fintech world is just able to move and adapt and be more fluid, right, because they're newer and, and the technology is fresh and the teams are sort of open uh, and agile versus sort of the internal infrastructure that doesn't allow traditional banking to adapt as quickly. So I often find that, you know, the banking side of the house has sort of this legacy customer experience approach, right? It's more of a community. It's providing sort of a, an intimate interaction with account holders. Whereas, you know, the fintech customer experience is just the um, getting it into the hands of consumers so much faster. So I think there's a lot to be learned from each other, right, about how we can sort of blend those two worlds, taking that sort of legacy approach to making it more human, but also in a way that's digital first. Excellent. Excellent. So moving on to, to Quavo then, working in the fraud and dispute management space, how has is, how is this area evolved for, for banks and fintechs as they're looking to conduct more operations online? Yeah, I mean, we've seen a lot of sort of reinvention of fraud and disputes management, especially over the past year or so. Uh, we're quite busy, which is a great, uh, you know, a great place to be in the world of, you know, what we do in fraud in general. But it is this sort of, um, you know, everyone's sort of attacking this from alerts and detection, right? All of that stuff is um, you know, sort of like the sexier side of fraud and disputes. And what we do is the what happens if all of those things sort of fail. And now an account holder is truly faced with fraud or they are trying to dispute something. So for us, it's, you know, really seeing that folks are trying to make this an actual customer experience, right? They understand that it's an important time that matters to an account holder if and when they're experiencing this sort of scenario. And how is that going to be managed and handled? How can it be an unexpected sort of uh, positive experience, right? I think most people dread having to call into a call center, go through an IVR, right? How can we actually have that person on the other end be thankful that their financial institution was able to handle it in a way that made them feel like they have trust and faith in the institution? And that they're also able to be able to move on with their life, right? Sort of that one call or one interaction resolution. And I think now folks are realizing that, that it's only possible through strategic partners, right? It's really hard to be able to overhaul not only the internal operation, but the technology with, um, within a sort of a legacy institution. Um, and why not use a strategic partner who all they do is fraud and disputes management, right, to really get that off the ground that much faster. That sounds good. I mean, can you tell us a little bit more about the, the Quavo platform then and what's making you stand out? 
Yeah, so we are the world's only end-to-end fraud and dispute management for issuers. Um, you know, the company was really bred out of a necessity to look at a space that was really sort of underserved. There's a lot of support and competition on the merchant side of the house, but there's really no one to support issuers from a product standpoint um, in the fraud and disputes management space. So. Yeah, today we're the you know the only one who are doing this in a SaaS platform that's cloud-based that has a product that is really almost plug and play, right? We have uh, deep integration that's highly configurable. We're going out and working with networks, and we're going to core system of records, bringing in information that helps the account holder and the issuer recover and reduce their losses. So. You know, for us, it's important to be able to continue to do the research and development to expand that, to really make sure that we're providing a necessity into that industry that is so underserved. And then also find ways of continuing to really reduce those losses and protect the issuer, right? And also delight the account holder, right? From a customer experience point, it's like a lot of moving parts there, but really, you know, using automation and AI to just further uh, take sort of the guesswork out of this, right? So we have a platform, we launched an AI product about two years ago, um, really the first of its kind to be able to make consistent decisions on behalf of both the issuer and really ensuring that we have a great customer experience for the account holder. Excellent, excellent. I mean, you mentioned you were, you were getting busy as well. I mean, do you think that frauds attempts are on the increase across financial? Oh my gosh, yes. I, you know, I, they're really good at what they do. It is a it's a profession like anything else. Um, you know, we saw all of the PPP loans and, and sort of all of the uh, you know the government side of what this looks like from a fraud perspective. Last year, we saw all the Google bin attacks that were you know really impacted financial institutions from credit unions to regional banks to enterprise banks and how they're going to be able to handle that. And I think on a daily basis, I mean, I how many text messages do you get, right? That your Amazon subscription is, you know, being compromised. So I think that, you know, we have um, we have a need to be able to help issuers, but there's also the account holder side too. Um, you know, working with other partners to make sure that we have enough data to really ensure that we're ahead of the strategies and that sort of continuously changing landscape. Yeah. Okay. So with the masses of data that firms are having to deal with now, how have you looked to utilize kind of AI and machine learning in your tech? Yeah, so we have, we have a platform. And then I mentioned we launched that um, AI component about two years ago. So Aria is our automated reasonable investigation agent. She's actually making decisions as a human would, but using automated intelligence and the data that's brought into that platform to be able to um, determine whether an account holder is experiencing true fraud or familiar fraud within a matter of seconds. So using the data that's out there from the networks, looking at account holder history and, and who you are and sort of how you interact with merchants and brands, using Google for geovariance, using other partners to really get data and consumer insights. And now I mean, almost to look at this the same way it's on the lending side, right? When you go to a loan, um, everything's sort of there in credit scoring. We're doing the same thing on fraud scoring. So now as an individual, we're able to truly get you, you know, your um, one call resolution, you're made whole, you're able to go about your business and we're still able to recover those losses for the issuer. So not only are we giving you as an account holder a great customer experience, we're reducing losses and still seeking recovery on the issuer side. There's still a lot of, um, you know, there's still a lot to be determined in the machine learning space and where we are. Um, you know, the regulator, regulators don't really like the idea that someone is doing this work um, outside of human interaction. So what Aria does is she takes that data. It's very, you know, calculated, it's scoring, it's configurable and it's transparent. So an auditor can come in and look at that information and be able to see exactly why those decisions were made and then have that sort of all bundled within the case. So, you know, we'll see as they sort of, um, we move through the next generation of using automation, if it does change sort of the regulatory language a little bit, 
Um, but machine learning is definitely something we have on our radar. Right now, we're really just using the automation piece to make decisions. Excellent, sounds good. And to finish off then, what does the near term future look like for Coif? And do you have any new developments in the pipeline? We are always looking at, you know, what's coming next and around the corner. You know, there's a lot going on with um, FedNow and uh, real-time payments. Um, you know, there are more and more networks that are providing APIs that we can, you know, use that information, that data to not only continue to have a highly integrated system, but also make it more automated. And then we also look at that sort of connection with who we have on the outside as partners. We've got, you know, merchant data, we've got um, acquirer data, and there's no platform that really services all of financial services in all of those components. So I think as we expand our brand and we go international, we're definitely looking at different ways that we can sort of make this a truly end-to-end -end platform for all of those institutions. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Brittany. It's been great yeah, talking to you. Yeah, thank you so much. Cheers.